Good morning. Good morning. Some things ain't going to change. I want to welcome you here to Southside Baptist Church this morning, members and friends alike. Uh, we have a lot of people out. we got some of our members out on cruises, some of them still visiting all over the place. So a lot of things going on. Uh, it's a good time to be with family. And so some of them have traveled to go to family. Some families travel to come to here. So it's a, it's a good time. I just... Uh, we had a very, very good Christmas at our house this year and uh, still going on, still have some, some, uh, some of our children staying with us at, at the house. And so it's just really, really a great time of the year. It's been a good year. And do you realize this, gang? If we make it a couple of more days, we're going to live to 2022. Wow. We've gone way beyond 2001, a space odyssey. Amen. Wow. Announcements? None. Okay. <laughs> this morning, we're going to be in some most exciting scripture. Psalms 136.1. Psalms 136.1. For his mercy endureth forever. Amen? Amen? But first, in a rural area, a farmer was tending his horse named Buddy. And along came a stranger who desperately needed the farmer's help. The stranger had lost control of his vehicle and ran off in a ditch. The stranger asked the farmer if he had a horse that he could somehow pull his vehicle out of the ditch for him. And he told the farmer that the vehicle was small. The farmer said he would come and bring his horse and, and take a look at it, but cannot promise that he could help if the horse might be injured or some way from attempting to pull the vehicle out of the ditch. The farmer did see that the stranger was correct and that the vehicle was small, so the farmer took a rope and fixed it to his horse, Buddy. So Buddy would be able to pull the vehicle out of the ditch. The farmer then said, Pull, Casey, pull! But the horse wouldn't move. He then yelled, Pull, Bailey, pull! But he wouldn't pull then. And the farmer says, Pull, Mandy, pull! Wouldn't pull the ball. Just stood there. And again, then he said, Pull, buddy, pull! And man, buddy, pulled with all his might and pulled that car right out of that ditch. And, and, and the, the, the stranger says, That's amazing. That horse is so strong. He said, But how did... Why did you use those other names? That's very strange. But he says, well, I mean, the farmer says, well, but he's blind. And, and I had to make him think he had some help pulling that car out. <laughs> or he would not have even tried. <laughs> the moral of the story is, don't wait on others in order to accomplish something or you may always be in a ditch. <laughs> Sometimes we won't attempt to do something if we know we don't have help. Get out there and try it. Amen? The thought for today is this, and this is a good one. This is a good one. This works in business, and it works in, pri it works in regular life always. Uh, I mean, it's a strong one. Private purity, understand that private purity is the source of, of public power. Amen. Understand that. How many people have failed because they failed privately? Take Jesus into your private life. Let him rule your private life. Amen? And then you will have public power in front of others. You don't have anything to be ashamed about or anything coming up on Facebook, hashtag, mash tag, and all that junk putting you down all the time. All right? Now, this morning, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, back in this, when this Psalms was first sung, okay, because Psalms was known as the hymn book of Israel. Isn't that cool? What we're going to do, we're going to read the entire 136th Psalm. There's 26 or so out verses there, okay? But interesting, we're going to do, you have to realize, in the synagogue at that time, they had set aside singers and the singers would usually sing the, the psalms and in this case here they would sing the psalms then the 
people would answer in the last part of the psalm, each line. You're going to see that exactly how it, how it happens there. As you look at Psalms 136, let's look it over. We're going to read the whole thing out. What we're going to do, it's called a, sister, you got it right on target a while ago when you said that. We're going to do a responsive reading. I read, you respond. Okay, so I want you to respond. And, and this is what they did in the synagogue. So you can think, thousands of years ago, they were doing this. It's really cool. But they would have a group up there, and, and they would do the psalm, and then, then the people would respond with, the, with and our, the Lord's mercy endureth forever. Okay, so that's your part. Your part is the second part of every verse, for his mercy endureth forever. Okay, you got that? And now let's stand. Now, if you're unable to stand, you sit right there. Don't you worry about standing up if you cannot stand. I know some of our members here cannot stand. Don't feel bad about that, okay? And so I will do the, resp the reading, and then you will respond each verse, and it's right there in your scripture, for his mercy endureth forever, okay? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. He's still good. Amen. Ron pushed him back like that this morning. I didn't have anything to do with it. But anyway. <laughs> oh, give thanks unto God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doth great wonders, his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretcheth out the earth above the waters. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights. For his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day. For his mercy endureth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night. Now, it's going to switch here. He's gone from glorifying him to gone to victories that God has given them, okay? To him that smote e Egypt in their first barn and brought out, Israel from brought out Israel from among them, his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divideth the Red Sea into parts, his mercy endureth, and made Israel to pass through the midst of it. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. To him which led his people through the wilderness. To him which smote the kings. And slew famous kings for his mer for his, Go ahead. I get so excited I'm reading the whole thing. I love this area. Sion, king of Amorites. And Og, the king of Bashan. And gave their land for an heritage, even an heritage unto Israel, his servant, who remembered us in our low estate, and hath redeemed us from our enemies, who giveth food to all flesh. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. Father God, we come to you this morning. Oh, Lord, what an amazing, what an amazing psalm. As we, as a, as a church, corporate, dear Lord, together, bow down before you because of your great mercy that endures forever. We love you, dear Lord. Help us look at, at go back and look at the very first verse, dear Lord, that would set this all off today. And may we also live in this new year, realizing that God's mercy endures forever. Be with us now, dear Lord. Hide me behind the cross. I only preach your true word. Forgive me if I failed you this week. I want to come before this great group with a pure heart. And if there's anybody here today, dear Lord, that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, let this be the day that they say yes and are set free from Satan's snares. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Man, that sounded great. Now, let me go back and read that first verse again. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Okay? Let us, in past years, we have picked, we have had our members pick a word. 
that you carry with you all year, a positive word that you can do for the Lord. What we would like to do this year as a church, together, corporately, take this one statement in our hearts and remember everything we do every day, we can say, for his mercy endureth forever. The good, the bad, the in-between. Okay? So, with that in mind, we have to realize exactly this 136th psalm is beautiful. It was constantly sung in the temple. And it was sung by appointed singers. This type of song was, was, was most appropriate because Jehovah's mercy endureth forever. No one is so worthy of our praise. Our thanksgiving is praise. When you thank God, you're praising Him as our God is. In verse 1, the psalmist exhorts us to give praise and thanksgiving to God Himself. Now let's break this down this morning and kind of look at this a little bit, okay? Uh, this is some most exciting scripture. And we'll start out with a very simple word, oh. Oh, there's a lot of meaning in that oh. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, is, is, this is directed to everyone who's in the room. So it's directed to all of us today. The very first word was oh. In other words, okay, everybody, oh, you, come on, let's praise the Lord together. Oh, let's all praise the Lord together. Okay? Pay attention here, people, it's saying. Other uses of O is this, O ye of little faith. O come all ye faithful. There's a lot of uses of O in there that means a whole bunch. Okay? But following O is a very cool word. Give. All right, now pay attention with me now, church. Let's give. And that's what we're here for on the Lord's Day Thanking him for a wonderful Christmas. If you were around family and friends, I pray you had a good time with them and loved on them. When the line is drawn at the end of your life, absolutely the most important thing is whether Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. But you know what the second thing is? It's family. Love your family. Leave your family something to remember you good by instead of being an old ogre or a complainer or a crybaby. Or I talk about everybody all the time. Praise the Lord in your family. Show them love in your family so they'll want to have good memories. Do you have relatives? Can you think of it with me today? I can think of relatives that I can think back of and I says, oh, wow, that was good. And then I think of another one and says, oh, get them out of my mind. They were always hard on us. They were always mean. They were always putting things down. They were always complaining. Don't be that kind of person because you're not going to leave a good memory. If you're going to leave a memory for Jesus Christ, it should be one that says, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to praise him in my actions, my love towards everybody, okay? So, oh, give. This means, this means freely, to freely transfer the position of something. My thanksgiving, oh, my thanksgiving should be transferred when I give it to the Lord. I mean, transfer. I want to give you all the praise and all the glory in my life, every day of my life, Lord. And our, we're to give with, with all of our hearts and all of our souls. Give with your love. Give with all your attention right here and right now. Give, give, give unto the Lord. And then what, is, what happens is, oh, give what? Thanks. Thanks. We are to be Christians. Eternally life Found Christians should be the most thankful people on the face of this earth. And it should show through our lifestyles every day, Albert. Okay? Oh, give thanks. Thanksgiving. In this case, we transfer all of our thanksgiving to, to what? Let's go. It, go. it moves on, okay? See, thanks is the act of giving thanksgiving a grateful acknowledgement of benefits and favor. You found, you, you've shown so much favor towards me that you, by me believing in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, you've given me, I have etched in stone of heaven, etched in the Lamb's book of life, my name is there, and because of that, I have eternal life with Jesus Christ in heaven. Whoa! 
If you can't be thankful about that, go back out and come back in with a different attitude. Being thankful is also making, making a public expression and celebration and acknowledgement and acknowledging the divine favor and the kindness of our God. It should be in your lifestyle. We should, it should be there all the time with us, okay? So let's see here. They had people in the sanctuary whose total job was singing this psalm. It called, it's called appointed, they had appointed singers. Wow, that sounds like the first praise team. <laughs> cool? Yes. So we're to get it. So we, we, we love our praise team up here, and they sing, and sometimes, hey, they make mistakes. Hey, I make mistakes every day of my life. Who gives a flying lizard leap? As long as they do it for the Lord, I don't care. It, I don't care if you can carry a tune in a bucket. It, by the time it's filtered through the Holy Spirit, God only hears beautiful sounds. So just sing and have a good time doing it. Amen? Now, it says, unto the, oh, give thanks, unto the Lord. It doesn't say Southside Baptist Church there. It doesn't say anything about denominations. It doesn't say about anybody, anybody else on earth but the Lord, okay? Now, unto is used here to do unto others, kind of, okay? And in this case, it is directed directly towards God. Israel has very loved the Lord with all their hearts and all their souls here, okay? We have noticed that we, that we look at Scripture, it becomes all about things that bring praise to the Lord, doesn't it? You, you summarize the whole thing and it's praising the Lord. Well, you say, Brother Robert, that's, that's not hard to figure out, okay? I could have figured it out myself, okay? But we need, to, we need to always be reminded of that. Well, then let's all give thanks Unto who? Guess what? Our, our verse this morning and all of God's word points only to one who. And that's God our Father in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah for that. Ephesians 2, 4, and 5 says this. But God, who is rich in mercy, His mercy endureth forever, for His great love wherewith He loved us. Even when we were, were dead in sins, hath quickened us. Quickened means brought you back to life. He brought you back to life. What? He, brought, he quickened us, brought us back to life together with what? Christ. As Christ rose from the dead. I believe that with all my heart and all my soul. Amen? Amen. The day you accept Christ as your Savior, your old dead life is gone and you're rising up and you're now a new person person. You're starting all over. That's why Jesus said you must be born again into a new life. It's all right there in black and white and sometimes red. Yes. All right. Quicken us together. What? With Christ. By grace you're saved. Hallelujah. That's a powerful verse there, okay? We were dead in our sins but we are brought back to life together with our Savior Jesus Christ. More and more, we must realize how wonderful for His mercy endureth forever is to us. That phrase is amazing. I just think of the benefits we receive from freely choosing Jesus as Lord and Savior. We are allowed the privilege of eternal life and living in a new heaven one day where there is no hint, there's no hint of sin or hurting, no sickness. No, nothing that we face here. No coronavirus. Yeah, you got corona can't get past the gates, gang. I don't know who that corona dude is, but he, he ain't going to make it to heaven. And because of this great gift, we are to be eternally thankful for our heavenly Father. Our prayers are often filled with requests. Lord, I need this. Lord, help me. Lord, heal this. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But that can't be all of your prayer. See, here they're praising the Lord for every single thing that He does. See, we often request, how many times do we just give thanksgiving? We may give a few words of thanks at the beginning of our prayers, but then most of our prayers made up of requests. 
Perhaps we need to revisit this method of prayer. God has done so much for us. So we especially, the redeemed, which we are, should be grateful for our salvation. Amen? Judy, I didn't pay enough of them to say amen this morning. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'll, make, I'll do better next week. Right. Just kidding. If you cannot think of anything for which to be thankful to God for, you're in trouble because you're very selfish. If we want God to help us in the future, we had better learn to be thankful for our present blessings. An ungrateful heart is not going to get very much good hearing from God. And on top of all this, those who cannot thank God will have trouble thanking others. Failure to give thanks to God for what He has done for us is to dishonor Him. That is why giving of thanks is one of the most important ways of praising God. Christmas, Thanksgiving, and other holidays are not the only time we need to thank God for His blessings. We are a people that are to be thankful every day, every hour, every minute, because of God's blessings are so many. So, we have covered, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Now let's look at the second. For He is good. Woo, that's great stuff. For He is good. Why should we give thanks? It says for, used to indicate a place or something someone is going towards. So for, because our God, the God we're praying to right here and thanking to for our thanksgiving is to be because of our God. Hallelujah. He is good. He, singular, he and only he is totally good. We think we're good, but we compared to the goodness of God, we haven't even begun to be good yet. Matthew 19, 17 says this. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. This, is, this be Jesus talking, okay? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Man, that's a bad dude. Man, I love that scripture. Okay? See, the lost world... Is filled with many gods. Most of which have, have an evil streak in them that idolaters believe we must appease via great sacrifices of our life. Lost people who worship these gods have made their gods like themselves. The Bible says God created man in God's image. Mankind has been trying to, to create for centuries Create God in man's image. I often heard one time, it says religion is man's way of getting to God. Jesus Christ is God's way of getting to man. Amen. Mankind, their gods are scheming, impulsive, unmerciful, who delight to trick us and deceive us and to defile us and to ruin our lives. But the true God, oh, my brothers and sisters, the, the true God in heaven, he is good. I can hear the appointed singers at the top of their lungs. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Amen? Hallelujah. Of course, there are many in our day who are, who, are, who are not sure that God is good. Let something go wrong, and they're the first one to blame God for it. How deep is your Christianity if you blame God for what Satan usually does? Praise Him in the storm. Your strength is found in the valley, not on the mountaintops. It's easy to praise God when you're on top of everything. Everything going good. Bank account looks good. Christmas is over and you still got $5 in the bank. <laughs> but how about when things go wrong? 
God says, you need to learn to praise me then also. I often tell a story. I've told it many times. I'll tell it again. The old boy was out in the ocean. The old undercurrent grabbed him. Pulled him under. Man, he was drowning. All of a sudden, he feels somebody pulled him. They, they pulled a guy swam out there and pulled him up on shore. They were pumping his lungs. And people were saying, oh, Lord, save him, save him, Lord. Oh, Lord, save him, save him. So finally, the guy wakes up. And everybody says, thank God you're saved. Thank God is so, God is so good because he saved you. The guy looks up and says, God is good if he didn't save me. See, we've got to realize if things don't go my way, our God is still good. Because, see, we're looking at what's on the other side of Jordan. Not what's over here. You ain't gonna find hardly anything good over here. Eventually it's gonna somebody or something's gonna let you down somewhere. But put your hope in the God of heaven and not the gods of earth. Furthermore, the way that people and governments are acting, you would think God was a bad influence on our students in our schools and in our homes today. But our text is right. God is good. Amen. Therefore, praise him with thanksgiving. And now we have, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Now let's bring it home. His mercy endureth forever. Woo! That's a bad dude, okay? Mercy. Compa you realize what mercy is? Compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish. God can punish us for our sins. But his mercy says, you've trusted Jesus, come on into me. That's, all I need is that blood of Jesus on your forehead. You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and on the doorpost of your life, he paints that on there. And the sacrificial lamb gets you into heaven. It's all about Jesus, it ain't about nothing else. He's the only one going to get you in that door. Nothing else, good being good, being honest, being everything. You do that because of Jesus, not to get to Jesus. Amen? The phrase is repeated in every verse in Psalms 136. It is a delightful phrase that gives hope and encouragement to all of us. It gives hope to every sinner who would come to Christ for salvation. But they may, may fear God will not accept them. There's many people I've, I've had, oh, I'm too bad for Jesus Christ to forgive. I looked at him and said, oh, he forgave me. Now, that's probably worse than you ever were. All of us have sordid backgrounds somewhere pre-Jesus Christ. Something in your life. And Jesus took that and cleaned it up through the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah for that. So anybody this side of heaven can accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The only sin that will keep you out of heaven is the sin of non-belief. Non-belief. He'll forgive anything. And don't go out there and do something and say, well, God's going to forgive me for it. That is wrong thinking. None of us would have gotten saved had it not been for God's mercy and grace which reached out and saved us from the terrible condemnation of sin. None of us deserve divine blessings, but we do have His mercy, which is far better. Now, with that in mind, let us live with the thought that our praise should Endure forever. Since his goodness never ceases, our thanksgiving should never be silent. I'll give thanks unto the Lord for his, for he is good, for his mercy, his, his, God's mercy endureth forever. And with that this morning, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5, 8. That God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into them and sup with them and them with me. Romans 10, 9 through 11. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man believeth in the righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not 
be ashamed. In Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. And I realize we're, we, we've gotten through this pretty quick this morning. When God's message is strong, you don't have to preach forever on it. It's a strong message. And I feel this is strong for His glory, His love, His strength endureth forever. Love Him forever. I'm going to say an invitation prayer right now. We're going to stand. And if the musicians aren't up here, we'll just have a moment of silence. You can come to the altar, whatever you like. And we'll, go, we'll have an invitation like that today. Let's stand and pray. Father God, we just ask you to bless this service this morning.